Hey everybody, so thank you for tuning in to another video here on Brick House Builds. This one is going to cover that fuel cap right there, this nice, sweet flush mount unit that you see in this deluxe tank. Now, this is going to be a little bit more lengthy of a video than you might be used to, and that's because I really, really want to show how much work uh, that is involved to, to do something like this. Now, I am not an expert at this, so this took me two tries and a lot of extra time. So, you know, I'm not going to put this one in music. I really want to showcase just my struggles as well because I do make mistakes and I want to let you guys in on those as well. Show you guys what I did wrong and also, you know, hopefully what I did right. So anyway, stick around. I think this is going to be um, maybe not as much fun, but definitely informative. So stick around and I hope you guys enjoy it. tank here I have a panel cut out and I tried my hand at the English wheel so we have a couple curves in this thing wasn't too bad um, I have laying out pretty good this is the only piece I've ever done on an English wheel so I don't really have anything to compare it to but once we trim it back I think it'll fit really well so what I'm gonna do now is extend my max marks on the uh, on the tank hole here and then try to translate those onto my patch panel and then from there I can trim this thing back and then start working on making it fit before we start welding it all right I am getting ready to tack in my patch panel here some things of note I am not a body man so don't just like copy what you see here because I'm not going to claim that it's at all you know the right way to do it uh, this is just the way that I feel works best for me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use my TIG. I have it set on a pretty low amperage because I'm using a silica bronze filler rod, and I have a cold rag here to try to just minimize heat. I'll I'll just try to tack it and then you know just cool it off. But I've already sanded this. I've acetoned it, and I've taken my torch to it just like a real low heat to burn off any fibers from the. Uh, from the rag and stuff like that. So everything is clean. Uh, I'm gonna grab one more rag here. We're just gonna go for it. So hopefully I don't end up throwing this thing across the, uh, across the shop. That would suck. Just gonna keep making adjustments. Go from there. Okay, so here we are. We've got the panel welded in. I did abandon the TIG uh, about a quarter of the way through. I I began to to tack some spots, but just uh, trying to control the heat, I ended up putting more heat in there because I had to stay on the uh, pedal longer to try to wrap it in and anyway it was just really complicated so it started to kind of warp a little bit and I have worked on this thing for quite a while doing a, a lot of body hammering and stuff like that so I did end up trying you know getting it pretty pretty straight but I've got the uh, I've got a stud weld polar and uh, I borrowed this from a friend actually who's gonna paint this thing and we're gonna get this thing, you know, I'm gonna work today on pulling it, making it as level as possible, and that way we can fit the cap in here. And speaking of that, let me go ahead and show this to you guys. So this is a, a real cool uh, flush mount cap with, a, with an aluminum spin-on. 
This is from Low Lowbrow Customs again. So you would thread it in, a little rotate, but this fits in here really well. And uh, from what I've been looking at, I have a little high spot right here, so I'm gonna try to shrink this. And that should allow the uh, sides to come up. So I'll, do, I'll shrink this a little bit, and then I'll work on basically pulling all along this seam a little, and then uh, get this side more leveled out, and we'll just go from there. But all in all, it's actually, you know, it, it's pretty decent. You know, it's my first time actually making a patch panel like this. Like I said, I use the English wheel and stuff, so pretty, you know, pretty complicated for me, but I just want to try to do it as good as possible. So today, like I said, we're going to just play around with that stud weld puller and try to get this thing leveled out. So that is priority number one. And then hopefully we can get this thing um, back to, or at least the ability to get this thing back to him. So um, speaking of my painter, you guys, if you have Instagram, if you have Facebook, you should check this guy out. So his name's uh, his name is James Fawcett, and he runs Slipstream Cycles, and he's also here in like the St. Louis area, and he builds some seriously rad bikes, and uh, really, really genuinely nice guy, um, really talented, and uh, if you guys remember, or if you guys were familiar with the uh, CB350 or the CL350 that I recently did, you know, like earlier this year, that, uh, that scrambler, all those videos that I made, those were actually for him because he had a customer who wanted to build that bike. So I built that, or I got that bike running, and then uh, he bought it from me and built it for his customer. And uh, I'll put a link into the uh, Bike Bound article, but uh, there was a full write-up on it, a lot of cool photos. He made that thing amazing. So he did a full custom kind of real aggressive off-road scrambler look to it. And it's, it's awesome. So definitely go check it out. Definitely give him a follow. And uh, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm excited to, to get this over to him, let him work his magic on it. So, anyway, I'm gonna keep working. getting ready to uh, begin the process of welding the actual filler neck in here. So it's fitted how I want. I went ahead and put my, uh, my gas lens back on the TIG here. I'm going to be using silica bronze and I'm going to do this very slow. So basically just going to tack it in I think six spots here and then I'll, uh, I'll tack it, let it cool, and then I'm going to run like a few, you know, a few dabs, and then let it cool, move around, let it cool. So this is going to take uh, probably over the course of like an hour or something to do. So uh, we'll show getting started on it and then, uh, and then finishing it up. But I'm pretty excited. This thing's leveled out. I know it looks a little crazy right here, but uh, yeah, this is like some super thin metal and... and it's just been a lot of work to get it to get it to this point, but I like where it's at now. And then from here, uh, you know, the filler and just smoothing it for you know the body guy, he'll be able to he'll be able to get this thing done, and it'll look good. But uh, once I get this welded in, I guess that means I could uh, put this on the bike and ride it. I mean, everything else is good. Just put a little bit of grease in the diff and. It's a rider, so that would be cool. So anyway, I'm gonna get started on tacking this up.
That's why I hate this fuel tank project. Immediately, one tack. One tack this thing is crazy. I have got a lot of time in this tank. I'm not a body guy and I've been doing the best I've can I can at getting this filler neck in, taking every precaution, asking lots of questions, reading up on stuff, and no matter what I did, I still mess it up. So I had cut this panel out. This is gar this is hot garbage. I had cut this panel out. And I had did the uh, English wheel and made a nice panel, fitted the neck in it, and I had it all just, just level. I had it very level, you know, between the stud weld puller and uh, you know heating and cooling body hammers and dollies and stuff like that. But I went to weld the filler neck in after I did tacks, letting everything cool. I did like a little bit at a time, you know, like alternating, letting it fully cool before I welded the next section, and still it just lasagna this whole thing this metal is just so thin I, I can't do anything with it stud weld puller won't it won't even pull it up it just rips through and then I can't get a body hammer in here I can't I can't do anything it seems like so I think I have to just I don't know I cut the whole section back out or something but this is ridiculous I don't know where this clip might end up, but uh, this sucks. This sucks. I already tried to just put a relief cut in here just because, you know, I, I can't shrink this because I can't get anything from the inside. So I tried heating it and then putting compressed air on the inside and cooling it. And I tried, I tried shrinking it as much as I can. I couldn't get it. So I tried doing a relief cut just to pull this up a little bit, but at this point it's like, how am I going to get that level? Uh, yeah, it's not, you know, if it was high spots, that'd be different, but they're all lows and I can't, I can't get those pulled back up. So this sucks.
I have no idea what I'm doing, by the way. Keep working. So here we are. We have a new panel made, and it's time to trim it down and get it fitting to the tank. Now, what I feel like I might have learned from the last uh, the last attempt um, was my my first problem was that I didn't leave a gap between my panel and the actual tank. Now that's for expansion and contraction as you weld, and the metal heats and expands and cools and shrinks and whatnot. So. I think that was my first mistake. So I will take uh, extra care to make sure I have an equal gap all the way around. I'll take, you know, not that I didn't take a lot of time before, but I'll take more time to get it fitting perfectly this time. Uh, I've been playing around with the body hammers. I th I'm gonna work on this little edge right here. It's got kind of like a weird, you know, low and high spot. I'm gonna get this little corner uh, sitting naturally how I want it. And then we'll just go from there. So what will be difficult is I don't have a hole in this yet, so I'm trying to imagine the tool I'm going to use that creates a space here. It has a little piece that locks from underneath that my buddy showed me. And so I don't know how I'll get that in there. I probably won't be able to uh, right off the rip, but at least getting the panel like maybe tacked in place and then maybe I can drill a hole and I don't know. We'll figure it out. But this one, I do feel it lays down better. I'm trying to figure out about where I had it. Now, of course, while I was working on the excess, I don't know if you guys have seen that or not, but you know, of course I was working on the excess and the vibrations on the workbench from the air compressor vibrated this thing off the tank and onto the floor so it did fall on this corner. So it might actually be a little bit more tweaked than I thought because it was fitting down pretty good. Anyway, I'm gonna work on getting this fitted and it's gonna be awesome. We'll go from there. All right, I've got this panel fitting very nice, actually. So I've got uh, the correct gap all the way around it, so that gives it room for expansion and contraction. And I mean, it's just levels can be everywhere. So pretty proud of this one. Um, I don't really want to, but in order for me to actually weld this, I would like to have at least a piece of uh, uh, non-ferrous like a piece of aluminum underneath as I tack in places and uh, just to help you know prevent burn through and uh, you know have have something that's like a as like a heat sink so well as well as the uh, the jigs I have to make sure I can actually put the little tool in there so what I need to do is actually cut the hole in the panel beforehand to fit the cap so when I made this, when I made the second panel, I tried to avoid putting any kind of crown in the middle here, and I, I actually did so. So there's very minimal, and so the cap fits very flat, which means that whenever I cut this hole, or whenever the cap, you know, filler neck sits in there, it's not going to have any like, any you know, minimal gaps to the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and break out the big old hole saw, and get a hole punched in this thing, and then we'll go from there.
Awesome. It doesn't feel like it really lost any strength there. So that's good. All right, so we have this thing ready to weld. I have it in these fixtures. So each one of these clamps actually is pulling from the bottom. There's a little slide here. And that is keeping a gap in the material right here and then clamping it together. So uh, the panel was fitting just very well without the clamps, but these are gonna help, um, in my opinion, just with stability. So, you know, putting a tack here or something like that isn't gonna try to lower the back end. And so it's gonna try to remain all solid. Uh, whereas last time I was holding it together with like tape and, and magnets and stuff like that, I think this is gonna be a lot more substantial. Uh, and it's not like it's, it's not like it's forcing the panel to conform to any shape right now because the panel fits exactly how it should fit. You know, without any of these clamps here, it's a complete flush, you know, fitting panel. I have it, I really took my time. I got it fitting perfect. So hopefully we can minimize any kind of distortion. Um, I did, you know, as you saw, I did have to cut the hole in here for the filler neck. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to do that because I was worried about it losing a little bit of integrity, but I had to, you know, cut the hole in here so I could get the little clamps in here and, and, uh, and go from there. So what I will do is I'm probably going to start from the middle, you know, on either end and then, uh, just kind of start working my way, my way out and, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, probably not going to film any of this, but I'm going to go ahead and get the MIG out. I'm going to MIG it just because I can control, I feel like I can control the heat really well. Uh, I got a piece of aluminum here. I'm going to put that underneath the butt joint and then, you know, that way it's not burning through. Anyway, I'm just going to go for it. Wish me luck. Everything's tacked up all the way around. I know it doesn't look the absolute best, because we're using a MIG, obviously, but what I was doing here with the aluminum is, uh, with the aluminum in the clamp, using this as a heat sink as well as like a backing plate so I wouldn't like burn through the metal. I put this underneath each spot I'm gonna tack. And then um, the gap there, I just basically weld straight to that, and then it joins the two pieces of metal. So underneath, you know, you can feel it, but it's not nearly as bad as what it could be, and there's no, like, big pieces hanging off or anything like that where, you know, it might occasionally, like, blow through or something like that. It doesn't happen in this way, so it has something to stop against. Now, what I did is I started in the middle on each side, and then I worked my way out, you know, uh, Basically what I did is I, I start in the middle and then I do like, you know, every half inch or so I started just tacking towards the corners and then just filling those in in the same kind of pattern seemed to work out pretty good. So, uh, let's just hope I can get the, uh, the cap in here looking good. But as I was working on this, 
Um, you can see my file marks. I just kept running my file along, it, making sure I find you know high and low spots, and just trying to like pull or push whatever I needed to as I went. So it this is super level. But as of now, I'm gonna go get a couple flap wheels and uh, start taking taking the seam down and looking for any little spots I missed. I know I had a little hole right there, but gotta start getting that flushed and uh, see how smooth we can make it. All right, so we have this thing leveled out. And then with like any job that's gonna require the MIG and putting a panel in here, there's gonna be a couple spots where you didn't have, you know, the best penetration. So what I did is I shut the lights off in the shop. I got my flashlight here, put it inside the, uh, inside the tank and then just look for any of those tiny holes where uh, light could pass through. So each one of these circles is a little spot. Um, so not too bad. And then what I think I'm gonna do in this instance is go ahead and take the TIG and then just, uh, just do a fusion tack on each of those things and that should just blend everything and close it up. And then from there, that will be, that will be done. This thing's looking really level. I know there's like a little low spot back here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, that, that sheet metal's so thin, I'd actually prefer it to have a little little bit of filler right there. Um, other than that though, man, this thing's looking really good. So I'm gonna do that, and then we can move on to the filler neck. Exciting stuff.
All right, so I have been at it multiple days with this with this dang thing, and what I ended up having to do was cut an access hole in the bottom of the tank, which I didn't want to do. But that's because, just like the last panel I tried to put in, as soon as I started tacking the filler neck, it started to to warp the warp the nice perfectly flat panel yet again and this one being a thicker panel and just welded better it it still warped it and uh, I'm not saying like I'm just going out here like me 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 like doing a bunch of a bunch of uh, uh, a bunch of dabs or anything like that it's like one just one tack and it warped this piece still I, I don't know how I could avoid it so create a big high spot right here and then just naturally in the curve of the tank I had two high spots here and then put a big low spot here and anyway it just started to get out of shape so um, I ended up pulling a bunch of it back up and then I ended up uh, you know doing some shrinking with heat and then the uh, shrinking hammer got this spot back down got this these two spots lowered a lot but it still wasn't perfect so that's where that hole comes in the bottom so just using the body hammers and some dollies I've been working all day I'm just getting this leveled back out so it looks really good now. Uh, well, it doesn't visually look really good, but if you were to lay your hand on this, it actually feels pretty dang good. So not perfect, but that's where the body filler is going to come in hand. It's going to just, you know, we'll just feather it and, and it should be all right. So a heck of a lot of work, like a, an immense amount of work. And my hat is off. My hat goes off to you body guys out there. This is a big job and this is a heck of a learning experience. So man, I'm glad I'm 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 glad that I am honing in on it. I'm glad that I did the pro. I'm 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 angry now, but I'll, I'll be glad in the future that I went ahead and did this because I do like to learn a lot. Ooh, I definitely didn't get this on the first try. So, ooh. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and mig up this panel back into the bottom and uh, get this thing over to paint. Let him let him start having fun with it before I kick it across the shop. So. Anyway, geez, on to the next thing. Here you can see the final form of the cap. And this panel is definitely level again. It definitely wasn't easy. But push, quarter turn, and then it threads out. Really cool setup. I'll link this cap in the uh, description for sure. Nice and clean. Hey guys, thank you for sticking with it this long. I really appreciate you watching it. I know this video was probably not the most exciting, but I really wanted to keep a lot of content in here to show you guys exactly how difficult it was or the challenges that I faced within doing this project because you know not everything is easy for me and I know uh, some of this can be quite daunting so I just want to show you the struggles that I went through and I, I feel like you know I'm just just being honest with you guys and, and, and showing what it's really like anyway took a lot of tools took a lot of time it's I still haven't even <laughs> I still haven't even cleaned up but I'm glad that I'm finally to the point where I can call it done so anyway Hopefully soon I can get this stuff off to paint and we can start coming up with a really cool color combo for the bike. I don't even know what it's going to be yet, but we're going to get there. And we're honing in on that final stretch on this bike and a first test ride will happen soon. So anyway, um, if you liked this video, definitely give it a like. And then uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe because I post a lot of content as much as possible on all things motorcycles. So if you could, that would really help me out. And then if you wanted to support the channel further, support me further, go ahead and hit up BrickHouseBuilds.com. You can pick up, you know, like one of these hats or a shirt or a hoodie, what have you. Any orders are greatly appreciated. And uh, that just really means a lot to me. So anyway, again, sorry for the long video on this one, but I hope you guys enjoyed it or at least found it informative. So anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.